All right, guys, we are doing a fun French press, and I haven't decided if it's coffee or tea yet. So let's get started on this and see what happens. Good morning and welcome to everyone joining me here on the live stream. I'm Stephanie, <clears throat> and I have a little bit of a froggy voice this morning, and this is Deliberately Creative. We are here to explore creativity, to really rest and reset and what's better to rest and reset than to have either a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and just sort of slowly enter our day. Now some of you might be watching this late at night. Have a cup of tea with no caffeine. <laughs> just saying you know I drank coffee way too late last night and so I had um, a very restless night where I didn't sleep as well. So I need to not drink coffee at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. You know, just one of those things. We're going to get started on this though. I really like this picture, except that it feels a little empty. So I think we're going to put this on a cutting board like that. This was the reference that I had used when I was drawing it. And you notice my drawing is wonky. My drawing is a little bit, a little bit off, and that adds to the charm and the hand-drawn quality of it. I also, uh, you know, just, I like that sort of slightly off kilter. It's, the handle is a little small. The, the thing is a little tipped. It's okay. It's okay for those things to happen, and I want you to see that it's okay to draw a little off and it's okay to paint a little wiggly because it just adds to the charm coffee puts you to sleep oh my goodness that is um i've i have a friend or a gal that i knew many years ago who if she had caffeine it was like somebody had um you know, stuck her finger in a light socket as soon as she had any caffeine. She couldn't even have chocolate because of the, even the low amount. It was, it just totally sent her into almost a, a an allergic reaction. So caffeine can do that. Um, oh, wow. So thank you guys so much for coming in. Click that like button. Yeah. Let YouTube know that this is something you want to see. And that you think other people who are like you would want to see too. We're painting on the bamboo Hanamula bamboo mixed media paper. It's a uh, 265 grams uh, per meter GSM. And it is 90% um, cotton and 10%, excuse me, I said that again, 90% bamboo and 10% cotton. And uh, this was just a sample card. So I'm going to go ahead and get the whole background wet down up above, and then I will uh, just above the, above the line, and I will work in my wooden board or the wooden countertop. I might just make the whole countertop wood instead of doing a cutting board. I think I like that. So... Just getting that. I'm going to wet the inside of the above the plunger also so that it gets a bit of whatever color is in the background inside and it's all nice and wet. This is a one inch flat wash brush. It is by Simply Simmons and you can get it at, you know, any of the big box craft stores, craft stores. I need to be careful when I am speaking. And that's something for me, you know, all the time anyway. I am going to be painting with the Core, Q-O-R, watercolors. You can use any kind of watercolors. It would work with the fan palette. I just had the Core sitting there and I spritzed it already so it would be ready to go. Our cups are going to be done. I think I'm going to use gouache and... I haven't chosen what colors I'm going to do. Probably a turquoise. And um, I want to use the gouache just because it gives it more s solid substance. 
So there we go. Oh, I've already got that wet enough, I think. Letting the paper sort of drink in the water. I don't want it to be too wet. This is not watercolor paper. It is mixed media paper. So I think we are going to put this background, I think, into that sort of Prussian blue, whatever I've got on my palette right here. I just mixed a little Prussian blue kind of into that space. There might be a little purple slipping in there from yesterday's painting from the flower. I think that's good. That's a nice, that's a nice color. All right. So I'm going to take that slightly darker gray up here at the top and then I will work it down maybe a little bit down here at the bottom and tuck just a bit of it showing through inside. Sort of like a vignette where it's a little bit darker on the outside edges and then it comes down and it's a little brighter in the middle. You can see the shine. That just is because it's nice and wet. And I, I'm kind of working it towards the center. It's getting almost a starburst type of an effect there, isn't it? I might even put just a touch of, just a touch of yellow. Kind of like that sort of a glow. Maybe this is near the window. It's not in front of the window, but it's kind of near. I'm sort of lighting it myself. I'm not worried about what the reference is showing particularly because the reference basically is um, <laughs> just white. They put it in a light box type of situation and I'm saying it's on a counter. So little things, little things like that. You know, you can, you can work stuff out. Welcome everybody. Good morning. Thank you to everyone coming in. This is going to be a lot of fun. I am looking forward to it. Sort of having just a, a calm and fun time. Now, my, my line in the background is a little off. I'm not too worried about that right now. Oh, and does any, does anyone in this live, in this chat live stream? Um, so Johannes, we're, um, we're, we're kind of keeping it, you know, um, to art, art questions. So if you have questions for your friends in here about art, that would be awesome. But welcome. I'm so glad you're here. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. I was just working a little bit more of that dark up into the corner. And maybe a little bit more down here in this bottom corner. But see, it's very light. And it will, it will soften as it is, as it dries. Ah, Devontic, that's, you're, you're sweet to be here. I appreciate you coming in. Um, so I have a, a special, you know, call out for my um, moderators that are really busy right now and things are going on in their lives. And I love that they have um, some positive things. And sometimes we have things going on that are a little bit um, challenging. And so... If you guys could just, you know, positive thoughts for my moderators that have challenging things going on in their lives right now, I would really appreciate that. And positive thoughts for anyone who is experiencing some challenges right now, because, you know, we, we all have challenges in our lives and being able to come in and do some some creative work and chat with friends. That's all a lot of the good stuff. And sometimes when we get really busy, we can't come in and do those kinds of fun things with our friends. And uh, so, you know, 
positive thoughts for everyone experiencing things that might be challenging them right now. So there we go. I'm just drying this background because I like it and I don't want to move the background around anymore. So we're just going to dry that really quick. Just enough to keep it from, from creeping while I'm working on the bottom here. I'm going to get the bottom side wet now. And I'm going to work on the wooden floor or the wooden tabletop. Instead of it being the instead of it being that cutting board, I'm just going to make it all a wooden counter. I, I like that effect. And that way I could put like maybe a knot in the counter right here and have it give a little bit more interest because right now this is feeling a little not interesting on the bottom part. Ah, oh, Lorianne. So, yeah, definitely, you know, having that. I, I, I really, I honestly believe that being able to have those positive thoughts and having other people have positive thoughts for us too just builds that, that well of positivity in the universe. All right, so background is wet. I am going to take some of the nickel azo yellow. It's really bright. And then I'm going to take some of the burnt umber, which is not really bright. See, I'm, I just kind of muddied that down just a little bit. Maybe a little burnt sienna. I'm, I'm kind of working my way into finding kind of a nice backgroundy type of color. I'm up on the edge of the brush. Let's see if we can see that. It's really bright. Sorry about that, but I'm up on the edge of the sharp edge of the brush. Just sort of putting some of those lines for the wood. It's been a couple days. I haven't done wood. You know, sometimes when you don't do something very often, you lose the you lose the touch or you lose the idea of how it works. So I'm just hoping that I can kind of figure out what I'm doing. That's going to just sort of be brown in the very background there, and then maybe I'll I'll come back in and have more of the. Oh, there. Yeah, that's working. Let's go back to the top, though, because it's a little too bright. So I want more of that burnt umber. Now, the paper is wet. And so the pa the these lines are all going to bleed. And fill in. And I'm probably going to be switching to my round brush here in just a second. But I'm just basically getting some tones that will be sort of stripey. And I'm working them on an angle um, just to kind of give it a little bit more motion, I guess is what I want. And I am going to put a little bit of that going through down low. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, beautiful people. I'm going to soften that up and actually work it up. This could, this right now could still be tea or it could be coffee, but it's giving us just a little bit of a feeling of something is in there. And now I'm just taking the flat of the brush and kind of drawing across. I want the colors to sort of bleed together. And if you didn't notice, sometimes I'm working out a technique as I'm doing it for you. I don't claim to be a master watercolorist. I claim to be a beginner 
who is having fun sharing my journey with you. That's my claim. See, now I can go in and I can kind of, I can even sculpt those lines a little bit. Maybe I want it to be a little flatter in back. So thank you guys so much for coming in. Coffee in the morning, always a good thing, right? I'm just softening up that brown color that went up onto the cup just so that I don't have the strong lines, but I am going to be using gouache, so it really doesn't matter too much. And the reason for using gouache is that it will give me the opportunity to really make that cup feel more solid, and it will give me the opportunity to fix maybe my, my line a little bit and sort of straighten up my cup. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes when you're drawing especially when you're drawing on a live live marathon type of thing um it things can get a little wonky see i'm taking that that brush and i'm letting it sort of separate a little bit and i'm wiping out some of the color and letting it sort of give me a little bit of a wood grain look if you do that as it's drying, you're picking up color off of the table or off of the surface of the paper. And it gives you it gives you more opportunity to kind of sculpt the color in. See, look at that. Now we've got this little knot starting right there. I just picked up a little bit of the color. And I think I want to go to my round brush. Ah. <laughs> hello hello thank you yeah i love my community hey guys i absolutely adore seeing your artwork when you do your video or do your artwork for my videos please tag me i have been absolutely blown away um annabella or annabelle r and um uh, kathy bartowski b oh my gosh Thank you guys for sharing your artwork with me. I love getting to see it. I just picked up with my brush now, my little round brush. Not little, sorry. This is a number 12 round by Creative Mark. And it is their Mimic. It is the, look at how nice and sharp that is. Nice sharp point. You can get up on the tip. And you can really get... finer lines, more detail. There we go. So if you guys are painting, if you're painting along, I know that I know I have people painting along and I appreciate that so much. I love getting to see your work. All right. Oh my goodness. This is looking pretty. So now as it dries out, you can get your brush to separate at the tip a little bit and you can really let's zoom in zoom in more there we go and focus sorry my my remote is sitting on top of a little uh, tin of colored pencils right now by having it separate apart like that you can get more of that wood grain to show in just touch your paint this is you know working those details working those details we will probably put a little bit of a glaze over this after i dry it once and there will be shadows going on here so there will be shadows matter of fact i might even take even before it's dry i'm going to take a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown and the Burnt Umber and a little bit of that Nickel Azo, Nickel Azo Gold. See it warmed up that, that gray. And I'm going to say that the shadow is actually going more to the back behind it.
but that that count that wall is way far behind it so I'm not I'm not too worried about making that perfect I'm going to soften it up there will be a shadow behind the cup right here I'm making up my shadow because I totally changed the orientation of things they have their light coming well actually no my shadow is going just about the same isn't it light is coming from this direction right here so shadow is going that way the top part of that is going to get softer but the base is actually pretty dark because the the light is right up there at the kind of high so there'll be a bit of a shadow underneath of the cup but not much there'll be a heavier shadow underneath of the front edge you want this to feel like it's attached to the table I'm not too worried about the shadow on the um, black base because you're really not going to see it but I do want a heavier shadow so I'm picking up some Payne's gray and mixing it into that brown so it's still the brown tone but the Payne's gray is just going to help it darken up just a bit kind of burn it up a little bit more I'm just using the very tip of the brush and going tap 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 right along the edge And a little bit more back here and by doing it that way it's helping the that shadow that's behind there feel like light might be coming through so it's going to soften it did I just splash I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, love you all too. Devontic, that's so sweet. So, just sort of softening that up. Yeah, I did put a little bit of that handle down on there. Just bringing a little bit of that darker tone in around the edges. maybe into my wood grain just a smidge soften that shadow see by softening the shadows up and I want to put a bit of that shadowy color back here just just because where there's a light there needs to be dark and so I need to have a little bit of some darkness back there So that the cup will really stand out because I want the cup to stand out let's zoom out and see what we're looking at like I said I'm making up my shadow and so sometimes when you make up your shadows they don't always make perfect sense that's okay enjoy the enjoy the process of growing your shadows You like to learn watercolors and gouache? Excellent, Marian uh, yeah, Marianthi, because I'm going to be doing gouache today also. I'm just working that shadow a little bit darker right there. And then just a bit as it's going up. I want that back edge to be a lot darker, but not black. There, there. Again, wood grain on the table might not be as pronounced. Yeah, I've got the splash right there. I see where you're, what you were talking about. Guess what? It just works in. Paper, this paper lifts. This paper really does lift, so 
your your colors can lift on here and move so you know a splash in the wrong place not as damaging as you might think I'm gonna darken up that back corner there too Sometimes it's just a matter of playing and sculpting and just kind of learning when to stop. So like I just went a little bit too far here. That's okay because I can go back in and darken up my shadow that I want to be much darker and then soften it out. See, I'm not really happy with that bit of shadow right there. So we just softened it out. But I just made that shadow behind the cup a lot stronger. It's okay. We have water soluble or water uh, mixable oils here. Um, but I've not, I've not uh, done much with them yet. <laughs> But I and I don't anticipate that becoming something that I do on my channel too much yet. Uh, you know, I, I would need to learn a lot more. I've done watercolor periodically through my life. So I have a little bit more of a an idea. I'm just sort of getting that base back in there again and maybe a little bit of the shadow of the the glass and then I just touched it with the paper towel. Yeah, there, see? Maybe I want that knot to move up a little bit. It's just, maybe it's one of those printed on knots. Maybe this is a laminate countertop, you know, so it can have a bit of a drawn look. Or it might just fade in and become very soft. This is turning into more of a walnut countertop, isn't it? I think it started out as maple. Um, I don't know. I'm making that up. <laughs> but there we go. I, I like that. I think that's good. We need to dry it. And I just worked my, my shadow out again. Dagnabbit there. Ooh, I like that uh, Van Dyke Brown. The core paints are so nice because they just sort of go and they blend out so nicely. Really darken up the shadow right in there. I'm going to put just a touch of it coming out for the handle. There, see? I even worked that back in, didn't I? It's just like doodling. It is just like doodling. I did some doodling last night. I was having fun late at night. You know, sometimes you don't want to draw something that's super representative. So you, you know, just doodle. And so I was doodling some patterns last night. I think doing that painting yesterday kind of got me in the idea of doodling. There we go. If you work your lines all the way from a line to a line, so like from the edge of the cup all the way off the edge of the table, and don't stop short, just let your lines go a little bit long. It will give you more of that <laughs> Okay. If you just bring the giggliest smile to me. Ah, thank you. Thank you. I, I find joy doing this, you know, and I'm not too worried again, like I said, if it got into the cup because I'm going to use gouache. That's going to wash over it. Let's, let's go ahead and dry it and see what we've got going on here. We can always go in and add more color. But sometimes if you continue to play with it, all you do is work a hole in your paper. And I don't want to work a hole in my paper. 
somebody asked what is overworking and overworking is basically just continuing to work on something until it makes mud so let's just uh, dry that and remember that this is the background <laughs> we're but the cool thing here is that the the details on the coffee pot actually the tea or coffee inside is going to be done with um so what is it guys is it tea or coffee for me it would be coffee but if i've got more tea drinkers in this french press i will make tea Basically, putting tea in is making it look like um, little leaves inside. If you are putting coffee in, it's just going to be really dark brown. Ooh, I love getting packages in the mail. I need to be more, I need to be better though at going to my mailbox. The mailbox is about a mile and a half away, and I should just get out and walk down there more often. Um, my mailbox for work, my, my mailbox for home is right out on the street in front of the house, but you know, safety and all of that. So we're doing coffee, coffee for you. It's hot chocolate, green tea. Oh my goodness. Let's keep going. Anybody want to come to your house and finish painting for you? Absolutely not. Miss Amy, it is your painting and you're going to finish it eventually. You know, nothing says you have to finish it right this second. But, wow. Okay, I'm enjoying that. I think we are going to get... I think it's going to be dark. I think it's going to be coffee. But maybe there's a little bit of light. Well, no, tea works. Tea works. Ah, we're going to go tea. And the reason why we're going to go tea is because it's a little bit different color than... It's a little bit different color than the, than coffee. See, I'm taking that color right over the top of that, that background. Down here in the very bottom of it, it's going to end up getting dark. But what I'm going to do is put some of the green leaves down in here. But I just wanted to get the background of color in. Starbucks caramel flavor. Mmm. So right now what we're seeing through there is a bit of that background. I think I'm going to kind of dab that just a little bit. We will be we will be making this look like glass. So there's going to be that really hard white um, highlight. I'm probably going to move my highlight. Well, no, the highlight's going to be right about the same place since the shadow's going that direction as soon as I put more shadow back in. Oh, I just realized I needed more shadow back in. See? Like that. Bit of shadow. Doesn't take much. Okay, so I am that person that does jump around in a painting. When I have a color on my brush, I like to try and get it around in other places. And I need to make sure when you're doing your grain, you want, it, you want to make sure that you're going all the way off and coming back on. That's actually looking like a lovely little plank, isn't it? Maybe a little bit of a stronger line right there. I am just having, I'm just having fun guys, really. Let's just make that a little bit more of a plank. And it just happened to line up with that shadow. If that's the case, there's going to be a bit of a plank line over here. Ah. Making things up making things up. Sometimes when you make things up, it really works to your benefit. Sometimes when you make things up, it sends everything sideways. So, you know, add things at your, 
not at your peril, add things at your whim, but know that sometimes things will change the entire feeling of your piece with a single line, which is so true. You know, single line can change everything. And look how that single line just changed that and made it feel much more. It actually made it feel much more solid. All right. <laughs> ah, there we go. So now we've got that. We're going to grab some of that sap green and start mixing it into that yellowy tone that we had. And I'm going to put just some little wiggly lines. We're just starting to build, build our tea. I think there might be a few of them floating around still. You know, it's going to get pushed down into the bottom. Let's zoom in on that. See, wiggly lines, you don't even have to do, you know, this is not, I mean, T is all of these little wiggles all combined to each other. I'm going to put a little bit more of that green, and I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of the ultramarine blue. These are the core paints. Ooh, that, that made it pretty, but it's a little bit too blue. So let's work some of that yellow back in. I wanted a color that could be used to add some shadows in there. Down deep. It's a little bit more shadowy. See? Oh, this is working out really well. So sometimes things work out better than you expect. Maybe this is, ooh, this is peppermint tea. This is a, this is a, a container of peppermint tea. It's that good anytime. It's good for in the morning when you wake up. It's good for in the evening when you're getting ready to go to bed. Gets you started. Settles your tummy. It's, peppermint tea is probably one of the best things if you like peppermint. If you don't like peppermint, then it might not be. Then it could be lemongrass. All right, I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of Payne's Gray, add that in, make it even a little bit darker. I'm just tapping. See, I'm just tapping and because it's all wet, now I'm working kind of wet into wet here, things that I want to be more, more, um, Sorry, squeaky, squeaky. Things that I want to be more defined, I'm not going back up and touching so much. But down here in the bottom, I want this to get really dark. So, but I, I don't mind having some variation. So we can just be floating around in there. Maybe a few little dots of darker color underneath of an edge. Give you a little bit of some definition. Ah, oh yes, and chocolate, and chocolate, peppermint and chocolate. That that works really well together. Um, I'm not really a peppermint tea and chocolate person, but yeah, lemongrass, beautiful. See, so we could have, we could have all the different things. I'm going to zoom that out now, so we can take a quick look. Ooh, ooh, that's looking, that's looking really good. I think I need to actually start working on that plunger. There's going to be a lot of Payne's Gray going on here, guys, because that Payne's Gray is um, kind of the that silvery tone color. So I'm going to put some of that in going around the back and the front and coming across that plunger 
See how just that little bit, boom, it's starting to feel like it's something flat. There's a heavier line. I'm going to have to rotate this. And Actually, I need to dry. I need to dry to make sure that I'm not... <laughs> so that I'm not putting my hand through wet paint. I just don't want that to happen. So now we'll zoom in closer on that. Let's just get right in there. So you can see the details. Spearmint and chamomile, sleepy time tea. Oh yeah. See, there's all kinds of fun things that this could be, right? I just picked up a little bit more of that Payne's Gray and put it right here on the plastic board. This is that Coral Plast. I'm still using the same board that I've been using all month long. I used it all month long last month too. This is, so two months I've been using it and it still washes off. It's getting a little bit stained. See how it's getting a little stained, but it still works and I can still see my colors. My brush is nicely, it's nicely damp there's good color on it and it's down to a point it, when you want to get your brush to a point roll your brush in your in your wet paint and as you're lifting up just sort of very gently lift up I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit darker actually it needs to be a little bit darker a little bit darker right around that back edge And right here along the top edge of, this is where the actual filter is. This, this part right here, there's a wire mesh that goes up, comes up this edge. So this is actually the wire mesh filter that we see along the edge. We're just coloring. I mean, it's just coloring in. The cool thing with having line art that's already ready for you with the watercolor is that, or with the uh, ready for watercolor or colored pencils, is that it just takes a lot of the stress out of, it takes the stress out of getting in and doing the, doing the artwork. I'm going to say it's a little bit darker right around the bottom edge. I want to keep some of that light because that works really well. It makes it feel like it's pushed up against the glass. See, it makes it feel like that edge is right against the glass. Little things, little, little touches. If it's a, you know, tiny touch like that, like going in and putting just a little bit of a shadow in some of those, those filter holes. And this is a very small cup of tea because the, the tea hasn't started coming above yet. So somebody was making just a, a single cup, which is ridiculous. You should be making a full pot of tea if you're making a pot of tea. What do you think? Should you always make a full pot of tea? Do you, do you mind drinking cold tea if it was supposed to be hot? Do you go to the microwave and heat up your tea after? I know there's a lot of purists that you never put tea in a microwave or you never put coffee in the microwave. And I'm not one of them. I'll go warm my stuff up again. But that's me, you know? That's me. I'll go warm it up again. This is a metal rod that has a highlight on it. So let's just make it that lovely gray and leave an edge of light. See how you can, you can make things feel much more real than there might be a bit of a shadow because of that band going across there. And then up here, there might be a bit of a shadow because of that lid. It looks like there's a bit of a shadow right here. So it's a little darker, a little darker at the base right there. 
and then we're going up and leaving a bit of an edge. How's that? I mean, gee, you a little bit more shadow. See, and as it dries and you're looking at it and you go, oh, well, it needs to be a little bit darker. Make it a little darker. I'm going to go ahead and get Payne's Gray really dark, really dark Payne's Gray. This is just straight Payne's Gray. And I'm going to come down here and put some of that blue black because Payne's Gray is a blue black. This is really dark behind the cup. I'm going to leave a little bit of light so I have some place to move some color around. But boy, I, I really threw the pigment at that one. Lots of pigment. And I'm leaving, like I said, I'm leaving some little areas with a touch of light. Since I don't have the other side of it for you to really see the reflection, I'm sort of faking it here. Sort of faking it, adding that little bit of a reflection in where you wouldn't necessarily see it. You like sleepy time tea with the, uh, <laughs> with the teddy bears. Oh, the teddy bears and their night counts and their little nightcaps. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I I love the the um, artwork on those. I am definitely somebody who likes artwork on packaging. I think packaging artwork can be so pretty. I follow several people on Instagram that actually and uh, Twitter and on on uh, Skillshare that do art for packaging. So I'm just putting some of that Payne's Gray up on the handle. It's not as, not as dark right now. I'm leaving some of those light shadow or light and shadow spots. So it's light and then it's got some, some color. This is a black plastic handle. So it does have light and shadow showing up. Let's see what the back of back side of that handle to actually be darker. So I just picked up a bit more of the pigment and the underside right there, back side of the handle. <laughs> Give up reheating after three times. Yeah, yeah, I do. That's That seems to be my limit. Three times reheating. And I'll do the same thing for coffee or tea. <laughs> oh, this is fun. I am so glad that you guys are here and that you are enjoying playing along with me. If you're, if you're painting too, let me know. I am going to just grab some more of that Payne's Gray, get it down here on the palette board. I'm going to put the color in on the, the, the lid, the actual lid. And I'm looking at that going, this has a bit of a, a bit of a shine going on it. So I don't want to make totally dark. Or if I do, I can just go in and dab with my paper towel. So, you know, nothing is lost. And then the front edge here, just up on the very tip of the brush, getting that color in. And then we can move it around if we need to. And then 
you you actually have a little bit of space even though this is part of the part of the lid right down here and it is dark you actually have a bit of a thickening around the rim of the glass so there's a there's a space between and you know it's just little things that you look at so you see um right in this area right here there's sort of a thickening in the glass there's oh i forgot the spout ah you know what i did i forgot the spout let's grab a pen that is drawing right now let's see come on there we go uh the spout basically the spout is just a Kind of like that. Now we've got a little place for the coffee to get out or the tea to get out. <laughs> Hello, Joanne. Welcome. Yeah, having the sketches. So I'm going to I'm going to zoom out because, you know, this is the time to zoom out and <laughs> if you like these types this type of artwork that i'm doing i have i did all 30 of the pieces of art that i'm doing in january in one massive marathon and coming up today was the so this is where we Oh, there we go. Now you've got the the reference, the line drawing, and so far on the artwork being painted. Ooh, look at that. Hey, guys. Wow, we are over 100 in the room. Thank you so much for being here. Ooh, looks like I'm uh, putting some splashes on now. <laughs> because I went tap, 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 and um, forgot that I, I clapped. Thank you for being here. You get some celebratory uh, splashes in the background now. There we go. Um, click that like button, guys. I want to see those likes just go poof, explode, likes. And click that subscribe button if you like what you see. And what I was saying is that I did a, I did a whole marathon and made 30 drawings these are all together in an instant download if you want to support my channel. Over at the top of the chat, there is a link to Teespring. This is an instant download that you can get. It has all of the designs. And if you don't want to print it out yourself, that's the cool thing. Instant download and you can start printing and painting almost immediately. I like printing on watercolor paper. 140 pound watercolor paper. This was printed, the outline, and then painted. So this was printed from my, from the artwork. And if you don't want to print, I do have my Cozy and Creative Designs coloring book on Amazon. So it's a printed book. And you can use this as a reference book and draw your own. You can, um, for your personal use, you can uh, like put it under a projector or take a picture and enlarge it to the size that you want. Or you can grid it, um, any of those things. And this book does have um, just a light dot grid on the back side of each page. So that way you've got um, the freedom to paint in the book if you want to also. Yeah, 100. Oh my gosh. I'm going to dry those splatters. I, I kind of like them. <laughs> they made it fun. Oh, there we go. That is so cool. All right. I am going to water down some of that black, that Payne's gray, that lovely Payne's gray, and we're going to put the metal band in. And the metal band, I need to absorb some of the moisture off of here. So I'm putting the belly of the brush against my paper towel, and it just absorbed some of that moisture. 
We're going to zoom back in. All right. So yeah, thank you guys so much. I, I appreciate all of your support. I'm going to put this in. Look at this. I'm kind of putting it in like puddles because my brush is still really, really wet. And I'm doing it in up and down bands, just going across. So we can start getting some variation. I will be going across here and really, really detailing. I'm going, I just ju set my paintbrush right on the paper towel this time. And then I'm going back to my paint and I'm just picking up a much more concentrated amount. I want a little bit drier in my brush. And we see a little bit of that on the inside back. This is a metal band that goes all the way around. By not touching those bits together, I'm letting it sort of sit and stain the paper. Then I can go in with a slightly drier brush, pick up some of the moisture that's in there, and then almost connect those. See how it's making it feel like it's more round and shiny? There's some other, other colors. Greetings from Jamaica. Welcome. Welcome, Jamaica. I am picking up just a touch of some phthalo blue. And I'm going to put a little bit of that blue into that. I'm going to actually pick up a little bit of the burnt sienna and put a little bit of burnt sienna into that metal band. Just a touch, just, just a touch. You know, it's kind of picking up some of the color from around it. And I am going to be using gouache to make my super strong highlights. So don't, don't be too worried. But making a lovely illustration. Oh, this is working out. Okay, so guys, Something that I, if you've not been here before, click that subscribe button, you know all the things. But one of the things that I tell people when they are making art, and this is something that I think is really important for anybody coming in, I believe in positive self-talk. I believe that we need to say to ourselves out loud when something is the way we like it. It's like, oh my gosh, that's perfect. Or, oh wow, I love how that just worked. Um... Your brain hears the positive and it really helps you with thinking that you are a, a good artist. Building that positive self-talk inside really helps you grow. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm going to move over, kind of do a little bit more strong line, a little bit of a rectangle-y thing. Try and leave some of that, that highlight because that really is where the highlight's going to be going. Pick up a little bit of the burnt umber. And then you're going to get to a place where it's like, all right, I need to dry that real quick. So this is just a, a heat tool like um, for embossing if you were doing rubber stamp stuff. I don't rubber stamp anymore, but I still have my heat tool. So this heat tool was bought many, many years ago. So if you are looking for something, you can just use a blow dryer. You don't have to have that heat tool. I'm just bringing a little bit more right there. Okay. And now let's see. Oh, I see. So things that you, you know, kind of look at it and see, maybe a little bit more blue. I'm going to say that that um, glass is still Payne's gray, but just a touch more blue. 
right on that very, 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 very edge. I see a bit of a, of a thickening or a darkening. This other side here doesn't have much, but I'm going to put just a little bit just so that we know that there's the side of the side of that uh, carafe and maybe even take a little bit of that color right up here under the edge of that lid and into the spout. Just a touch, just a touch. You don't have to see, it doesn't take a lot. Let me zoom in on that. See, we pretty much have that. The only thing I need is my highlight. So I'm going to I'm going to grab, it's 3 p.m. in Jamaica. Wow, I didn't know Jamaica is the same as um, the United States uh, Eastern Time. Wow. So now what I'm going to do, bravery, we're going to take that just white gouache. This is the Arteza white gouache. And I am going, oh, and I didn't do the handle yet. That's okay. I'm just going to go like this and sort of start taking it straight down and then pick up some more. You don't want it to be, you don't want it to be, um, glumpy, but it looks like I still had a little bit of that darker color in my, in my brush. I'm not too worried. I'm going to put, there's a bit of a, not that, on the inside back here. So right now my, my highlight's a little bit gray and that's okay because then that gives me a place to put my bright white. So little bit of gray in my my brush right now because when I drug across it really went gray now I need to really get my brush cleaned out so it seems like you guys really like this coffee pot you guys want more coffee pots I've got a teapot tomorrow I believe I can even tell you what do I have? Because I'm working through the whole book. Oh, and if you guys are, are new, this whole book, I'm working through all of the art in this book. Yeah, so we've got the, well, it's not going to focus. We've, oh, there it goes. We've got the uh, teapot and macarons tomorrow. So I'm excited for that. And please leave comments after the video, leave comments. I've got 130 people watching and there's only 34 likes showing up right now. I would love to see 50 likes in there if we could. I think that would be really cool. Let's get it up to 50 likes. I am cleaning my brush and I'm going to pick up my white now and I'm going to dry. 134 people. That is so, so freaking awesome. Okay, that's as far as I go with um, cussing, guys. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that was, oh wow, that, that is so exciting. I'm going to go ahead and take my bright white, bright white gouache, put a little bit of that highlight on that band, a little bit stronger. Hey, Birdie M. There, higher highlight. But it doesn't have to be the whole, you know, it doesn't have to be that high highlight the entire way, does it? Doesn't that just make it feel more real? I know that there's a bit more of that highlight right in there along the Along there and there's a little bit of that highlight actually I'm going to put it kind of coming across 
even though it's not as strong over there, I'm going to put a little bit of some lighter highlight in the kind of on the glass. There we go. Ooh, picked up a little bit of the dark color from the from the tea down below. Cool. All right. We're going to get the color in on that cup. And, oh, and I need to put the color in on that knob, don't I? The knob needs color. Don't be a knob. Be a knob. All right. So. Because I did not do the knob on, um, I didn't do this whole thing on a as much of an angle so that knob is not you don't see the top of it I am putting a little bit more shadow on the rod going down through there we go and look I did not put I did not paint that whole thing in it's okay it is okay to not paint the whole thing in. Leaving some light actually gives you more, um, more shape and depth without having to do as much work. I just picked up a little bit more of my Payne's Gray. There we go, Payne's Gray. And it really should be a solid line, not bumpy, but you know what? It's going to do what it's going to do. And I am going to actually kind of clean that up just a little bit. This paint moves on that. Ooh, so what we're doing by kind of cleaning it up around the bottom, it's actually pushing that glass to the back. Okay, so that's sort of a, that highlight at the back. I'm gonna dry, and then we're going to put the highlight across the front. All right, thank you guys so much for the likes. They're coming in. This is so cool. So yeah, I all of the information for the materials I'm using are down below in the information box. So I'm using core watercolors that I squeezed into half pans and I just squeezed little drops of it. And then I made a um, little swatch card so I, I know what's in what spot. Because you know what? When you look at this color, you do not think that pretty gold color, do you? When you look at this uh, yellow azo, it looks kind of like baby poop brown, but it's this beautiful yellow. So just because it's a crummy looking color in the palette doesn't mean it isn't a beautiful color on the paper. So I am going to pick up a bit of that white. And by just putting a little bit of a highlight going across, we kind of make that shape feel more shaped. I'm going to do the cup in, ooh, well, you know what? I could just do the, I'll show you how to make gouache when you don't have, when you don't have a bunch of gouache. We're going to make the gouache. I'm going to, the cup is going in in that kind of turquoisey blue color. And I have a cobalt turquoise right here that's really pretty. And I've got a tube of white gouache. So I'm going to go and grab now I don't want to get the gouache into my palette, so I'm going to get a bunch of that white, a uh, bunch of that cobalt turquoise paint down here on my palette. And my palette that I'm using, my board is just a piece of Coroplast, C-O-R-O-P-L-A-S-T. And it is a, um, ooh, lovely. Lovely, lovely. I will have to wash my brush out, but I'm going to get a base coat of this color on 
right now. Look at that. Let's just get a base coat of the color. You can see your pen lines through it. So let's get that gouache on there. See, now I've got a turquoise gouache without, a tur without having turquoise gouache. I just have white and watercolor because this is regular gouache. It is, and I do have uh, like a 60 set of gouache, but I'm showing you how to do this with just one tube of gouache and a pan of watercolor. You can do all of the colors. The gouache gives you that opacity and your watercolor gives you your pigment because all gouache is is opaque watercolor. And when you buy gouache in tubes, you're buying convenience colors, basically. You're buying colors that are conveniently made so that you don't have to. So you don't have to. So right now I'm just running that color around, filling in. And you can use it in a transparent way, or you can use it in a, um, in a much more opaque way. Now I just picked up off the table some of the Payne's Gray, and I'm going to use that to start working in some shadow without really without doing any, I didn't even wash my brush. I just picked up that Payne's Gray and just dropped it in. I'm not paying that close attention to even to how the color, how the color mixed in. I think that's good because what's happening here is the white and the gray and the turquoise, they're all blending together Look at that, I can start working my highlight across because I still have more white in my brush. Since I know there's more highlight over here. Now many people, and truthfully I do say, you should let your, your paintings dry. This is, I'm really working it kind of wet into wet, kind of like you would do um, acrylic actually but this is watercolor gouache. See how we're getting that in already? I can take more of that white and blend it right here on the, on the paper. I like that. You got an airtight palette box for gouache. Yes. Um, yeah, lots of fun to do that. 150. Whoa, we hit 150, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming in. And please make sure and click that like button. If you enjoy this type of painting where we just, you know, kind of wing it. <laughs> Pretty much the way you do when you're working in your own studio or at your kitchen table. You know, wherever you're working is your studio, right? I'm just picking up more of that highlight and coming over here. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes you just put paint down and then you realize, whoops, where did I, I went wrong right there, didn't I? Or whoops, I need to move that color around. But if you look at the reference, there is actually some of those weird, weird reflections and highlights that happen. So like this one right here, that's actually in the reference. That is, that, that is very surprising, isn't it? It's very surprising. I, yeah, looking at the old masters is a great way to learn. And truthfully, that's how they taught their, their apprentices, is apprentices just looked at what their masters were doing and tried to copy what their masters were doing. So 
so I'm kind of going to fudge out that edge just a little bit. And I am going to have to wash my brush and mix up some more of my turquoise. And the reason why I have to wash my brush is I don't want any of the gouache going into my actual pan of watercolor. One of the things with the core watercolors, they're super, super uh, luminous. You can get really luminous colors. And you don't want the what you don't want the opaque quality of the of the gouache getting into your pan. So I'm going to just pick up more and I'm going to move down just a little bit so that I'm not setting it right onto the gouache space. And the reason why is because, well, um, you know, if you, if you put it into the gouache, now I can't put my brush back into, I can't put my brush back in to my pan until I clean it. So let's see here. I'm sort of, I'm not actually, well, yeah, it does. It looks like I'm striping it. I'm not, this is going to be highlights and shadows. And a little bit of that Payne's Gray getting worked in to be more of that shadow. Kind of a shadow under the edge. And there's more of a shadow off to the side. This is where I said I was kind of fudging that the edge of the cup. Just going to bring that out just a smidge. Seeing that gray coming down. We're starting to build some of that uh, shape. Now I did make the inside of my cup a color. So I am going to put a little bit of shadow around these outside edges of it. Since I did that. And then we do have to put uh, the tea in the cup. And I might be, hmm, I have to make a decision. I'll have to make a decision. What decision you say? Well, just a moment and I will tell you. First off, I'm just trying to straighten up the edge of that cup just a little bit. Actually, what the decision is, is if I'm going to put the, um, put the, the tea in with gouache or if I'm going to put the tea in with watercolor or if I'm going to put the tea in after I use some white gouache in here to uh, push over the edge of the where the tea is going because this lip is a little bit high but you see how we're we're building we're just the the cool thing with with gouache is that it's almost like you're you're sculpturing you're sculpting sculpting that was the word not sculpturing sculpting almost like you're sculpting this out and making it feel even more solid so there's that really dark space right inside the handle let's see if we can See if we can enlarge that just a smidge and maybe move it to that side. Oh, look at that. Since we're working on the working on that cup. And now my cup is not, like I said, is not perfectly shaped. It's okay. It's okay to not be perfectly shaped. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the white gouache out, I think, and then I will put the cap back on. I'm just sitting here. I am I am a um I'm a clutcher. So my left hand, I always have something so, and I kind of forget about what's in my left hand sometimes. So, you know, um, I, if I'm drawing, I have my eraser clutched in my, in my hand. 
if I'm painting, I have like a paper towel or something clutched in my paw. It's one of those things. So let's see, we're working some more of that white gouache in. I want to get a brighter light right there, but not totally, not totally light. And there's, I think I need a little bit more blue. That was a little too dark right there. Let's just really lighten that bit up. There we go. Lighten up that one and lighten up that one. I have seen people who can do totally realistic. I mean, so realistic with their gouache paintings. Um, I'm not. I'm not one of them. You do acrylic or hyperrealism in pencil? You're young. And, oh, I bet you are amazing. That's, see, and that's the thing. That's where that self-talk comes in, guys. Self-talk. You need to make sure that when you are talking to yourself, you are boosting yourself. If you wouldn't say it to a friend of yours, your best friend showed you that same piece of artwork, what would you say to them? Would you say, oh, yeah, it, it's okay, but, you know, you're young and, you know, well, you could do better. It's like, well, of course we can do better, but hello? Would you say that to your friend? Yeah, you could do better. Or would you say, oh, my gosh, how stunning is that? How amazing that you did that. You know, don't, don't ever talk to yourself any different than you would talk to your best friend. And yes, if your best friend says, be brutally honest, you're still not going to be brutally honest. I, I mean, gee whiz. Let's, we're going to be brutally caring we're going to be brutally loving. We're going to love with total, total, um, my brain just lost my words because I was so getting, getting drilled into the painting. You're going to show love and compassion to your friend. You're not going to be, uh, dissing the work. So don't do it to yourself. I just picked up a bit of gouache and I'm just working it across lighter in the blue, in that cobalt turquoise. And see now we're getting a bit of that front of that cup coming down. And gouache will cover up your pen lines. But now look, it goes over farther. <laughs> it feels a little more real. Without it being realism, I am not a, a total realism fiend. Um, you know, if you set me down, I am in the, I like the impressionistic kind of quality that you get, a painterly quality that you can get. Yeah, honest but with love. Honest but with love. That's, I mean, truthfully. But... If you are being truthful and honest with someone, always, you are going to look at it and you're going to find some of those things that they did absolutely right. You know, even if it's, even if it's something that you're like, Ooh, where am I going to find the good stuff? All right. Well, what, what's a good thing here? Oh, look at the way they used that color. Or their interesting color combination just surprised you. You know? Or look at the way they, they laid those things out together on the page. Their composition. Maybe their composition is just something you would never have thought of, but it's spectacular. Don't, you know, so what, 
what can you say? Three good things that you can say before you give a criticism or give a, con and, and criticism always needs to be constructive. So if you are looking at somebody's piece of artwork and you know exactly what it is they need to do, you need to frame it, frame your, your suggestion in a way that it's a suggestion and not an order. Don't order some fix this. It's, hey, you know, if you were, if, if you were to do this again, or when you do this again, because truthfully, we should do many things over and over and over. And I'm just, I'm just detailing that handle. I'm kind of sculpting it out a little bit, but I'm not, it's not, you know, going to be something totally perfect guys. And that's okay because your brain does fill in the blanks. But if you can frame things in a way with your friends or with yourself that says, when I do this again, I will pay closer attention to the, the shape of the rim. So I don't have to sit there and figure it out again. Now I'm just putting a little bit of some highlight, tiny little touch of highlight here and there actually makes it feel a little more real. And I know that there really isn't a reason for this high, high highlight right there. I'm putting it on anyway, just because. All right. Thank you guys so much. If you are new, I am so, so glad that you're here. I'd love to find out how you found out about this live stream. How did you find out about the live stream today? Were you just surfing and YouTube decided to share it with you? Or were you looking for how to paint a coffee cup and a coffee pot? <laughs> how did you find out about it? Uh, leave me a comment in the comments below. Or if you're here during the live chat, go ahead and tell me in the live chat. I do go back and read the live chat. I'm going to put some soft highlight in. A little bit more of that highlight right there. A little bit more of that highlight right here. And, oh, there's even a bit of that highlight showing up under the edge of the handle. See, my handle doesn't come down as far. I just noticed that. You know what? I can make my handle come down farther. That is one of the cool things with gouache. Look at that. I just made that handle grow. It's kind of the same thing with acrylic. You can lay your light colors over your dark colors. You can sculpt things in and you're not, you're not as limited to where your colors are going as you are with plain watercolor. Now this is, remember we're making this water, this gouache, all of these colors of gouache here were made with white and a color from the palette. A little bit of soft light there. Just enjoying the process. There you go. You originally have found out about the stream from YouTube search for drawing landscapes. Aha. That's awesome. All right, Roy. Well, I am really excited that you found it. All right. So yeah, my cup is a little bit, it is wonky. That's okay. I'm looking at that going, I'm going to brighten that little spot up right here. I'm going to really brighten up 
the side of that handle and right here just plain white gouache now it is going to pick up color from the from the actual painting because this is real gouache uh, watercolor it's not it's not the um, acrylic gouache so it does lift it does re-wet it does um, it does what gouache is supposed to do which is allow you to blend I mean golly oh golly that's so pretty so now we're going to put some, I'm going to put some tea inside of here. <laughs> celebrate the good times. Come on. Yeah. Hey guys, click that like button. Celebrate with us. If you are enjoying this, it helps YouTube know that some, that people are enjoying what's going on. I am actually going to go up here. You see where I've got that kind of green that green yellow I'm going to put some of that into this cup first there was a little drop of some paint that hit the hit the inside of that cup no big deal so what I did I put the color down I dried off my brush and then I took the tip and it just went slurp and it slurped up all of that, that liquid. I'm going to grab a little bit of the gold color, the quinacridone gold. It is a brownish gold, makes a lovely, lovely tea color, just a little bit in there. And then I'm picking it up straight from the straight from the palette straight from the pan that's what I'm trying to say that is looking so pretty I need a darker shadow underneath of that cup this paper does it give gram amount on the bottom of the cover somebody's asking about somebody's paper um, this paper is the Hannah Mula, 100, uh, about 125 pound, 265 GSM, mixed media bamboo, which is 90% bamboo and 10% cotton. And it is fantastic for this. I need a darker shadow underneath, so I'm just going to pick up some of the uh, Van Dyke Brown just right under the edge of the cup. I want that to feel like it is sitting on the table. And then back here, this shadow right underneath of the edge of the, under the edge of the coffee pot, I just picked up some burnt sienna because it's a darker, space already Ooh. all right let's zoom out and see what this looks like I am really <laughs> all right so let's let's do that we're gonna um, make the see I change things. I don't always do exactly what the reference is, but I take elements from the reference and try and translate it over here onto this. Now I'm looking right here and this edge of the cup, because it's in line with that reflection, really needs a higher reflection. My brush is dirty, so I need to go ahead and rinse out my brush, get the brown out of my brush. I'm going to grab some of that white that is clean. And I'm looking at that going right here. This is probably in front of a window or some type of a light. We need that 
reflection to be a little bit stronger. And I need that reflection on the back side of the cup to be a little bit stronger also. Then it feels like they're in the same room. It feels like they're on the same table. And that's one of the things to keep track of is where is the light coming from and am I staying consistent? If I put a highlight on this right here, it would be funny to have a highlight on the coffee pot over on this side. They, would, they wouldn't match. And you want your highlights to match as they're going across. I hope that helps. So Art with Lee. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. We don't do uh, self-promotion in other people's streams unless they ask for it. Some people do ask you to do that. But this stream right now, we are um, we're here for this artwork. So we're, we're not doing self-promotion for... So I, but I appreciate you being here and I appreciate how hard it is to, to get subscribers built up. And if anybody is interested in my artwork and continuing on with their journey here, excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> Sorry about that. Oh, tickle in the throat. <laughs> you still think that this cup needs a, a Coca Pelli uh, outline on it? You know what? You can do that. That's the cool thing. Just because my artwork, just because the drawings that I did during the during the live stream, all those pieces of artwork that I did, this is available in two forms as the. Uh, book on Amazon link is down below and as the downloadable instance so you can start painting these designs right away and there are so we are up to the coffee pot right here we have done all all of these other pieces oh the the pop tarts were a lot of fun Zen rocks um, succulents, a fun milkshake. We did it outer space. So cool. These are all videos that are already on the channel. And right after the show, I will be linking the iCard right up here and it will go to the playlist of all of the videos from this series. And that's where they will all go. So you would have 30 lessons in one place to go with the 30 designs. Really inexpensive. It's like, um, Four ninety nine or five ninety nine. I can't can't even remember what it was. It's very inexpensive. The book on Amazon is six ninety nine. I think this was five ninety nine. And you can print it as many times as you want. You can make your own coloring book with it. You can print them as individual pages. So I printed this one out on a piece of one hundred and forty pound watercolor paper in my printer, and then I painted it, and that's what I used for the cover. But then I painted the original piece of work. This is the original artwork, uh, the original drawing. I painted that during the class, so or during the video. So we're doing the originals for the most part during the lessons. I'm going to get this tape pulled off. So let's get this stuff out of the way so we can get the tape off of here. And we'll zoom in just a smidge. There we go. Oh, sign. Yep, I do need to sign it. I do need to grab a pen that, oh, and all of the, all of the artwork during the, that marathon was drawn with this kind of a pen. It's an eco pen. It's a cardboard tube with a plastic insert and it's waterproof. This was drawn completely with this pen. So you can draw with this pen and when it's dry, boom. And it dries almost instantly. That is the really super cool thing. All right, let's get that tape pulled off of here. So. I think I need to heat this up just a little bit. 
when you are uh, taking the tape off, if you heat it with your heat tool or with a blow dryer on high heat and break the adhesive, breaking the adhesive means releasing the adhesive from the paper. There we go. So cool. I'm so, so happy that you guys all came. Make sure and click that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here. I would love for you to be able to find me again. Oh, and the tape was just generic drafting tape. The um, It doesn't pull the paper as, uh, as bad as regular... Um, regular masking tape does. Look at that. <gasps> Guys, we did it. We painted a glass coffee carafe, coffee pot, French press, and a ceramic mug that actually looks like it's a ceramic mug in about an hour and 40 minutes. That's not bad. I hope that you like this. Click that like button. Show me you like it. If you want to see more coffee cups, coffee pots, things like that, let me know. And make sure that you come back tomorrow. We are going to be doing the, we're going to be doing this fun brown Betty teapot with macarons and uh, whatever else we're going to do the background. This is, these are the original pieces of artwork. So then the next day we're going to do this cute little elephant teapot. That was a request by one of my community members during the live stream marathon. If you want to see all the artwork being drawn, check out my 14 hour, it's actually broken into two pieces, but my um, cozy creative live stream marathon. It was 14 hours long, 12 hours in one video and two hours in a second video. Remember, click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, share my channel with your friends, and make sure to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific time, for another fun and cozy painting. Take care, guys.